Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, a big welcome to you all. How are you doing this evening? I am so happy that I have an opportunity to speak to you this evening. I'm really excited. If you're doing great, please type in the chat box and say great. It's a lovely way to interact with me, everyone. So big welcome to you all. Ladies and gentlemen, I am very, very, very proud of you. I am a firm believer of the fact that there are two kinds of people in this world. I call them action takers and excuse makers. Action takers are those people who get an invite like this and they quickly tune up because they would like to take their life to a whole new level. Action takers. And I'm also a firm believer that the only difference between the dream and reality is this one word called action. When you work on your dream with actions, it becomes reality. So welcome once again, action takers, my dear friends. We're going to have a great time together. I'm going to give you six ideas on how you can light up your life now. But before we get started, let me share an experience with you. You see, what you see right now is a power plant. Okay, It's a power plant. You know what happens? The power plant generates power. But do you know the secret? It does not have any power in it. It doesn't have power. It generates power. How? Now look at human beings compared with power plants. All right. What power plant does is power plant follows an organized process every day leading to creating power, leading to generating power. Power. Similarly, highly motivated people and people who are champions, they follow an organized process every single day to keep themselves on level 10 energy. Highly motivated, always ready for anything. And you and I will learn those six awesome ideas today. But before I share with you these six ideas, let me tell you, my dear friends, what comes to my mind is an appreciation for you because you have fought through, you've come across those challenges, and you are awesome. And my appreciation to you goes. दोस्तों कहते हैं ना you refuse to lose you became strong you stay strong and you're able to do some great stuff together so very 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 proud of you guys now it's time for us to get back to six secrets on how you can be highly motivated and create massive passion for people around let's quickly dive in i'm going to show you a picture what you see in the picture right now ladies and gentlemen is this wonderful woman her name is helen keller now, Helen Keller is a great women activist. She's a great leader. She's a fantastic, awesome author. And she wrote a lovely quote. The quote says, although the world is full of sufferings, it is also full of the overcoming of it. The world is full of sufferings. The world is also full of the overcoming of it. You know what? I understand. You understand. There is this coronavirus. There is a challenge going on. But people are recovering from the challenge as well. I know 700,000 people in our country have got infected, but more than 4 lakh people have come out of that infection as well. I know there are problems going on, but there are solutions going on in your life as well. Question, where are you focusing, my dear friends? Are you a part of the community that is always discussing negativity, challenges and problems and pollution or are you a part of the community that is constantly discussing possibilities opportunities and solution are you in that pollution zone or in that solution zone you have to understand where you stand right now and you know what my dear friends i'm going to give you a secret listen i personally believe that thinking about this virus is more dangerous than the virus Listen, I'll repeat that golden statement. Thinking about this virus is more dangerous than the virus. Let me tell you why. Because this toxic thought process is going to affect us. The virus will not. The virus will not. And God forbid something happens, we're going to get cured. But the virus will not affect us. Thought process about the virus is creating all the toxicity in your life. Is creating all the challenges in your life. The first important point that you and I need to focus and make a commitment right now is this energy goes where attention goes. If you want the energy 
to be in the right direction. Your attention also has to be in the right direction. If you are focusing on the virus every time you're going through all the news about virus, I think life is not going to go anywhere. Let me give you a personal experience. You know what? I live in this flat. Right above me, there is another flat. And this gentleman, uh, in the last 20 years, in the last 20 months, 20 days or so, he would speak to me almost every day. And every time he would call me, he would tell me, you know, Ashiji, you know what happened? I said, what happened, sir? Virus is touching 100,000. Now number of people are going 200,000. So I heard him politely for a few days. And then I said, Jain Sahib, ek baat batayye. just tell me, sir, you are such a great leader. You are an author. You are a lovely, you know, a champion in your organization. Where are you focusing? Can we discuss ideas on how you're trying to keep yourself motivated and happy despite challenges? Do you think that will be a good idea? He said, yeah, I think that's a good way to start thinking. I said, yes. Now, whenever we speak, we discuss positive solutions, not pollution. I want you to focus. You have to, the first key point, if you want to be successful is choose positive focus. You got to choose positive focus, my dear friends. If you're not choosing, it doesn't happen, by the way, automatically. You have to choose yourself every single day. And then Prashant, and then Sweetie, and then Yuvraj, you will be out of that toxicity. So you have to minimize toxicity, and you have to maximize happiness so that circle of challenge and those people who are contaminating your minds somewhere you have to decide to say no to that pollution of toxic thought process and say yes to the solution of happiness thought process a lot of people ask me but ashishji tell me how do you stay positive and how do you stay highly motivated all the time despite negativity my answer is very simple i tell them listen do you remember there was a network called hutch which later became vodafone and a very famous ad of that hutch network was there was a little puppy right and the puppy would follow in the advertisement so the ad says wherever you go our network follows you negative thoughts are also like that wherever we go network follows us the point is ask yourself is it useful is this thought going to help me in any way is it going to become is it going to make me better no then say no to that and how can you say to no to that is very simple Here's a very tiny story to share with you. You know what happened, my dear friends? Once a lady joins an organization and after working for seven days, she goes to her manager and says, sir, change my team, change my team. I can't work in this team. The manager says, why? You know, everybody in this team is talking negative. They're backbiting each other. I don't like the culture. Put me in a different team. The manager gives a task and says, okay, madam, I will change your team, but here's a challenge for you. What is the challenge? He gives her a glass full of water and says, Take, hold it and take three rounds of this office and make sure the water should not spill out when you are taking rounds of this office and come back and let's talk about that. Lady accepts the challenge. She holds a glass upright and she takes three rounds, very focused three rounds of the office. And then she comes back to the manager says, challenge achieved. The manager says, well done, ma'am. Tell me, ma'am, uh, did you hear anyone talking negative when you were, you know, you were taking a walk in the office? She said, no. Hey, did you hear anybody backbiting anybody? She said, no. Did you hear any negative thoughts striking your mind when you were on this task? She said, no. And then after a while, the manager says, so what did you learn from the exercise? And the lady had got a very important lesson in her life. She said, I agree. If we focus on key things positively that we do every single day, we will minimize all those challenges and we will be able to do more in less time and we will be able to focus on good outcomes rather than worrying about challenges. And the manager said, you got a great lesson today. Isn't it so true, my dear friends, that it applies to you and to me as well. If you focus your whole day on highly organized tasks, key focus areas, by the way, we'll talk about some of those today, you will by default be highly positive and this negative thought will not strike your mind come what may. So my request is the first and a very important point I want to submit to you is please choose positive focus by focusing and doing key things in your life that makes you feel better, that makes you a more successful person, that makes you achieve your life goals and your office goals and your personal goals. And by doing this, you will be able to focus more on the positive side rather than getting mixed up in the toxicity of people around who don't really matter a lot to us. So my dear friends, that is my first submission to you. And that is my first key idea to stay out of the negative thought process. You got to choose that positive focus. Now, here's a second very interesting one, okay? You know what? I'm going to get to the second idea now. The best way to stay happy, listen. 
there are so many things I like to do in my life. I like to do, okay? It's not that I'm doing, but I like to do those things. So what do I like to do? I like listening to light music. I like listening to motivational music. I like watching funny videos sometimes, you know? I like to exercise. I like to meditate. I like to play with my family, have a good time. I like to dance and exercise. There are so many things I love doing, all right? Here is a powerful suggestion if you want to be happy, my dear friends. My request is not every single thing you love doing, you can do every day. Here's my request. Can I request all of you to take a pen and paper and start writing? By the way, I always believe that if you want to get the best out of my program, please start writing. I'm a firm believer that inking is better than thinking. So start writing. Inking is better than thinking. Okay. So I would like to request you list down things you like to do every single day. Yes, there are so many things you like to do every single day. Mangal, proud of you. I want you to list down 20 things you love to do every single day. You love doing something which is very close to your heart. Now, you cannot do all 20 every day. I understand. I am with you. But the point is, can you at least please out of 20 things, do five things? you love doing every day and trust me you're gonna feel so happy and charged up like never before because you're doing those things that you love doing it is the same feeling your pituitary glands they release positive hormones amazing hormones called we call the happiness hormones like oxytocin dopamine and serotonin when you do things that you love to do you cannot do 20 things every day can you please do any five such things every day that you love doing and trust me you are going to rock the show you know something very important something very personal i want to share with you today i am a love i am a crazy love with good books i spend at least two hours every single day reading great books and i would have spent time reading about the top two percent of people in this world and one amazing book that i was reading just some time back is this one it is called The Tools of the Titans by Tim Ferriss. Now, what is that one key thing that I've always seen in most successful people is this. There are so many things that they do, but one thing that really makes them shine high is doing what they really love doing. You can't do everything that you love doing every day. I understand that. But can you please do five things you love doing every single day? If you think you can, can I request all of you to please type at least one thing you're going to start doing from today onwards that you really love doing from your heart. If you're excited, please type that one key thing you would love to do. Come on. Yes, let's do it. Make it fast, guys. One key things you would love to do every single day. So my second submission to you is Please list 20 and do five. Let's quickly revise what you learned. The first thing we learned today is choose positive focus. And the second important point that we learned today to be happy is list 20 and do five things every single day, come what may. I am proud of you. You are a superstar. I want you to again bring your hands up and give yourself a round of applause like that. Say, I am a superstar. Very good job, Karuna. Very good job, Sunil Ji. Very good job, Rajiv. Very proud of you. Thank you so much, Rajiv Ji. Writing is fantastic. You write every day. That's called writing journals. It's a wonderful way to make yourself happy. Good. Now, here's the third one. If you want the third idea to be happy, just type three and enter very quickly. Say three, enter, three, enter, three, enter. Come on, three, enter. Come on, come on, come on. Three, enter, three, enter. Very good job. Thank you very much. Now, a good friend of mine, Kostab, who works in Mumbai, he called me a couple of weeks ago. And you know what he said? He sounded very frustrated, by the way, on the phone. And you know what he said? He said, Ashish. I said, yeah, Kostab. Yeah. Life is crazy. Yaar. I'm feeling very frustrated today. I said, what happened? You see, the market is closed. Everything is shut down. Mumbai experiencing lockdown. And it's been like this for the last 40, 45 days. I can't go out to shop around. I cannot go out to have some good food. I can't go out to have my favorite coffee. It is so bad. So I heard him decently for a good five, seven minutes. And then I asked him, so you're feeling really bad that you can't really go out and have a coffee of your choice and food of your choice and shop around. I said, yeah, you know, I, that's my lifestyle. I love doing blah, blah, blah. I said, okay. So I heard him well. And then I humbly submitted to him. I said, Kostab, did you have uh, breakfast this morning? He said, yeah. How about lunch? Yeah, lunch we had. It. And how about dinner? That's everyday life. Yeah, what is so normal about that happens? You know, we eat every day. Every day normal. I said, do you know what Kostab? Kostab, there is a woman in Kenya of eight children who could not afford to buy food for her kids. So what she did was she kept on boiling stones 
in her utensils to make her kids believe that food is cooking, assuming that the kids will go off to sleep thinking that the food is being cooked and they will stop crying. Kostab, do you know? Do you know in Agra there was a milkman carrying milk? The motorcycle tripped and the milk got spilled on the streets and the very next second dogs came up and started sipping milk from the stream of milk. And do you know Kostab, amongst those men, amongst those dogs was one man who had not had anything to eat for a few days and he was found scooping milk from the stream of milk. Kostab, my friend, you know what? The world today is experiencing adversity. The world is fighting misery. The world is fighting poverty. And you are frustrated because you could not have your favorite coffee from a luxurious coffee store. My dear friends, he heard me and after that, in a weak voice, he said, I'm, I'm so sorry, Ashish. I didn't realize that. I said, Kostab, don't be sorry, dear. But my only request is, don't be a cribber right now. It is not a time to crib. It is time to stop cribbing and start thinking. If you want to be happy, stop cribbing, start thinking. Because when you start thinking what you have, when you start being grateful what you have, and when you look at the good things in life, you feel happy and motivated. When you're cribbing, you're creating negativity and challenges and problems and pollution, which you can't stand and I can't stand either. So my dear friend, you play an important role in the entire ecosystem. If you are happy, you're creating magic. Your people around in your family are feeling happy. They are feeling happy and they're creating happiness for a bigger social circle that they are surrounded with. And if you're working in the organization, everybody's feeling happy just because you are positive. So stop cribbing, start thanking for what you really have. And when you start thanking, you will be extremely happy all by yourself. So do an exercise every morning. Please get up and write down three things that you are proud of and you are thankful for. I get up every morning and I write down at least three things that I'm really thankful for. So write it down because you know what? When you're writing something good, by default, you're creating happiness for yourself. You see what? I live in a place right now and very close to my place, just across the road, there is a hospital. And do you know what, my dear friends, we are so lucky that we are seeing this day. But in that hospital, people are struggling for their every single breath. And you know what, Sunilji, for some people in that hospital, the last night was the last night. The last night was the last night. We are alive. We are happy. We are lucky that we are alive and we are happy. It is important for us to be grateful for the fact that we are happy right now, for the fact that we are enjoying with our families right now. A friend of mine, Rachid, got married. And after a few days of his marriage, his wife had to go on a very important business trip. She could not avoid. Three days trip to Malaysia. The three days is now four months. She's somehow struggling in Malaysia. And Rachid somewhere is trying to do whatever best he can in India. We are so lucky that we have a home where we are living right now. We are lucky that we have resources to take care of our family. We are lucky that we have food on the table. We are lucky that we are together with our family. And therefore, it's time to please write down, why are you grateful? What are you grateful for? Rather than cribbing. It is time to stop cribbing and start thanking for what you have. So my point number three, my dear friends, is see the good things in life and be thankful rather than being ungrateful for what we are cribbing right now. Man, that's my third and a very important submission that I have for you. Ladies and gentlemen, we did three quick points for now. The first is please choose positive focus. The second is list down 20 things that make you happy and do five every day. And my third point is see the good and start thanking every single day without fail come what may. If you're ready to try all of this, just type in the comment box and simply say ready. Everybody, let's say ready. I'm quickly going to go to the fourth point right now. Very quickly. Come on, Prashant. Yes, Prashant. Yes, yes, Devya. Shabash, Devya. Yeah, good job, Jagdish. Good job, Sakti Good job, Deepak. Good job, Sunil. So proud of you. Now, point number four. What is the first 
And the most important thing, great leaders do to start their day in a very different way. You know what? Morning time is the tone setting time of the day. If your morning starts good, your whole day is set to go great, right? Morning time is the tone setting time of the day. You know, I tell people that your mind is like a garden. Whatever you plant in your mind in the morning, that just grows over the period of time in all possible amazing ways. So what great leaders do is they want to make their morning absolutely fantastic. I'm going to give you some ideas on how you can make your morning awesome. And that is my fourth point to you. Here is the first and a very important point. Now, does it happen when you get up in the morning and imagine you're listening to a very high peppy song like it's my life or you know, something like that. A very nice song that plays for five minutes. Okay. And you're having breakfast while the song is playing somewhere in the, on radio or on Alexa or wherever it is. The song is playing and you're having good breakfast. Now your breakfast is over. Now you decide to start your laptop. You're answering emails while you're answering email the mind is still it's my life somewhere the mind the song is still running in your mind if that happens with you say yes simply say why enter if that happens to you and things run in your mind even after they're done say enter now that's the same impact that happens after you watch an action movie you feel like that superhero for a while right after you listen to a nice song you feel like oh my god the song is still running what it has done is it has made your day it has made a good, it has set the right tone for the day. So what great leaders do is they want to start their day in a very impactful way. Yes, very impactful way. Let me share with you my personal experience. I start my day every morning with my daughter, my wife and my family. We start dancing Zumba and I say, Alexa, play some nice Zumba songs. And we start listening to that good, amazing music. And we just dance the best way we can. And we enjoy that. So my point is great leaders start the day in the right way. That's the first very important request. Second, if you start your day and you're wearing a uniform like this, you're wearing a dress like this, a casual dress, you see what? Your casual dress code will put you in a casual attitude. Back, back in school, long time back, I had a PT teacher. And this PT teacher would call us in sports uniform, even when we are not going to play. We know that that day is just going to be a class, right? He's going to teach us some game rules. We're not going to go and play. He would still ask us to come prepared as if we are going to play. So I asked him, sir, uh, uh, today we're not going, going to play, right? He said, yeah. Well, then why did you ask us to come prepared in that uh, sports uniform? And he gave me a golden lesson that day. You know what he said? You know what Prashant he said? You know Robert what he said? You know Sandeep what he said? He said this golden statement right down. He said, your uniform puts you in the right form. Your uniform puts you in the right form, my dear friends. If you are not wearing the right uniform, you are not in the right form. Every morning, get up and get ready as if you exactly do what you do when you're going to office. So this is my usual dress code. If I'm talking to you and wearing a suit and a tie, when I conduct training sessions all over the world, I travel, I have had a great fortunate, awesome pleasure of working with different kinds of people all over, the, all over my, my life. So this is my daily uniform. I choose to wear the right professional dress code. I'm not saying wear a tie and a suit every day, but I'm definitely saying do not wear casual uniforms like this because you're likely to go off to sleep if you wear stuff like this. And Here's my third important submission, how to start your day. Listen, in the morning, I want you to put this on your, in your bedroom on the wall. All the great things you've done in your life. Yeah, you went to Paris, the first international holiday. Put pictures there. You bought your first car. Put the picture there. First home. Yes, you, you get something really great in your life. Put it right there. When you put any your broadcast or achievements in front of your eyes, you feel so happy that you know what? If you can do this, you can do the other great things also and then put your dreams also. One day you want to be CEO, put your picture right down and CEO coming soon, coming soon. Put that there. When you do things like this and you get up in the morning and you see a goal in front of you, you got a reason to be happy. You got a reason to be extremely charged up. So I want you to make sure you have to have these goals right there broadcasted on the wall right in front of you so that you win come what may. And that is exactly what Priyanka says, law of attraction. You attract positive energy. You attract happiness. Well done Priyanka, because you focus, you focus on that. It's like, you know what? When you're a photographer, if you're a photographer, let's say I'm, where's my cell phone? It's right here. If I'm a photographer, okay. And I'm taking a picture. If I'm taking a picture of a lovely sun sunrise, okay. My camera is going to focus on the sun and I will try and adjust everything I can to focus on the subject. This acts like a subject. When you focus 
you don't get distracted on other things. You'll be very happy to achieve more things because you're focused on the good things you're trying to create tomorrow. So like a laser light focus of a photographer, keep that focus in your mind every single day so that you can go higher and higher and higher and higher. And my fourth point on how to start your day is this. Start your day with good driving thoughts. Now what are good driving thoughts? You look at yourself and you tell yourself, I am useless. My life is not going anywhere, you know. Your day is going to be useless here. Come on, you and I, we all know that. You should never be talking negative about yourself. That's called internal branding. Your internal branding has to be so strong. If you brand yourself internally well, only then you are capable to brand yourself externally well. If your internal branding with yourself is not good, if your relationship with yourself is not good, you will not have a good relationship with other people. Mark those golden words, my dear friend. These are certain thought processes that has really helped me shape up my life. I'm telling you, internal branding is more important than external branding. If you feel better, then you can do better things with people around. You have to have a strong internal branding for yourself. Every day, tell yourself all your good qualities. You know, you can appreciate yourself for looking good, which you anyways do. But tell yourself, I am so proud of myself because I'm a giver at heart. I take good care of things, people and things and people around me. I am a go getter. When I decide to do something, I do it. I want you to appreciate yourself for five good qualities that you are blessed with. My teams like me. They trust me because I'm a trustworthy person. My family loves me. Mention those great qualities that you strongly believe. Yes, you strongly believe that you're proud of your core strengths. And tell yourself every single day, voice out in the universe, voice out, coming back to Priyanka's point, attract, attract that happiness every day, come what may. This will help you attract happiness for yourself. Your internal branding will be awesome because you are awesome. Can I request all of you, wherever you are, tell yourself, I am awesome. Tell yourself now, I am awesome. Awesome. So my dear friends, my fourth point is this, start your day positively. Let's revise whatever great things we've learned so far, my dear champions. We learned some amazing ideas. The first one is choose positive focus. Second is write down 20 things you like to do and do five every day. The third is called see the good things and please be grateful. And the last is everybody start your day positively because body morning time is the tone setting time of the entire day. By the way, before we get, before we get moving to the next part of our exercise, next part of our session, tell me, how are you feeling right now with me? Just type your feelings right now as I take you to the fifth point on how you can be happy. Okay, Mangal is feeling awesome. Thank you very much. Ran, Ran is feeling charged up. Robert is feeling awesome. Ritu is feeling awesome too. Very good job, Meiji. Very good job, Jagriti. Fantastic. Oh, oh, very good. Thank you, Karuna. Thank you, Gauri. Thank you, everybody. You are extremely awesome. You know what? We can lose anything in this world. But what we cannot lose is this one word that Karuna says. It's called hope. Okay? When hope is lost, everything is lost. These ideas will make you keep your hope strong. And that's why you and I are here together. Without any further delays, presenting point number five comes from an experience. This is a metro train, as you see on the screen right now. My dear friends, we had an office in Delhi and I would travel from Barakhamba Road in Delhi to Dwarka where I lived, you know. So every evening I would choose to take a metro because it was faster. Now I get to a metro in the evening at seven o'clock or so. It was fully packed, you know, and I was standing in the metro holding the handrail and the strap hanger and I was enjoying my travel and there was no space people are, you know, completely packed. So the next station, the next station was Rajiv Chowk. Now, if you heard of Rajiv Chowk, it's one station, which is the intersection. It caters to more than 5 lakh customers every day. It's a huge station, right? And the metro, when the metro arrives, we found that people were waiting outside to board the train. So the doors opened up and people moved inside the metro. And among so many people who moved quickly, of course, there was no place to sit or stand, but somehow we managed. Amongst those people was one gentleman, an old guy with a backpack, carrying a water bottle. He definitely needed a seat. I thought I should ask someone to help him get a seat because I had no seat for myself anyway, so I couldn't offer him. I was about to approach a gentleman and this guy was wearing a pink shirt. The moment I approached him, just before I could say a word, he himself, himself called this guy and said, sir, 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 please come and take my seat. Come, 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 come. And he very gently, very humbly offered his seat to this guy and made him comfortable. He left his seat and came all the way and stood next to me holding another strap hanger. Now we are traveling and I looked into his eyes and I said, 
Sir, what you've just done is a great act of kindness. You know what? It's people like you who make this world a beautiful place. Sir, you know, if you say that in Hindustan, it's called Sonne Ki Chidiya, then it's because of your good people. Sir, I'm so proud of you. My dear friends, when I completed saying all this, you know what happened? Tears rolled down his eyes. He gave me a tight hug and he said, Sir, I am trying to be the best I can for the world for many years. But in so many years, you know what? Not even a single person in my life has appreciated me with so much conviction like you just did. And now that you've told me, sir, I'll be even better than this. Friends, he felt so happy. He felt so charged up, highly motivated. And in the whole process of making him feel motivated, I felt massively charged up myself. I came back home. I looked at the mirror. You know what? And I saw myself with a better self-esteem, which means my worth in my own eyes had gone up. When you do something good for the world that the world cannot repay in cash or kind, your worth, yes, your worth in your own eyes, my dear friends, increases and boosts up. That makes you a champion. The day lockdown began. I live in a place which is a huge society, 22 acres, 1600 flats, 400 flats are occupied, rest are unoccupied. We were worried about those people who work here. You know, the sanitizing staff, the security people, the watchmen, the administration team, the people who look after the gardeners, the horticulture guys. We thought, how would these guys commute from tomorrow onwards? Can we do something? Immediately we discussed in our group and we said, let us go to the builder and see if they can offer some unused flats. The builder next day agreed to some extent. And then we thought we will take full charge of their ration pani for all this time. So we bought in bulk, we bought all the stuff, we stored them and tower wise distribution of work was done every day. One tower will make breakfast, one will make lunch and dinner and we would serve them with our own hands every single day without fail. And my dear friend, let me tell you the satisfaction and the happiness that we had when we were doing all that is absolutely Un, you, you, I can't explain that when they did all of that it was so good friends my point is very simple this lady that you see right now is 98 years, years of age her name is Gurdev Kaur you know what Gurdev Kaur Gurdev Kaur this woman 98 years of age she spends 8 hours every day from morning 8 to 4 p.m. in the evening stitching masks for people who cannot afford to buy masks and then his kids write on the mask a lovely message. And the message is, Hum honge kamyab. We shall overcome. Ye samay bhi beat jayega. And they distribute to people who cannot buy. If a 98-year-old woman can do something for the world in times like this, my request is, do something for the world now that the world cannot repay in cash or in kind in the whole process, ladies and gentlemen. You will motivate yourself like never before. It is called motivate others by doing something for them that the world can never repay to you in cash or kind. And that's called intrinsic motivation. When you are internally so motivated, nobody in this world, no one can ever more demotivate you because you're internally so charged up. You are an epicenter of motivation inside you when you do something for people around. So please do something for the world. So the world cannot repay to you in cash or kind, come what may. Ladies and gentlemen, we learned five ideas to be highly charged up. First is choose positive focus. Second is list 20, do five things that make you happy every single day. The third one is called see the good things in life and be grateful. The fourth one is called start your day positively. And the fifth one says, please motivate others in order to motivate yourself. I am sure you're going to follow all these excellent super five ideas. Here is the sixth one. Very close to my heart is the sixth one. Listen to this one. The sixth one comes with a very interesting story. It's a story about a lady. You know what? So this lady decides to go shopping with a very sweet little baby, six months old daughter. She puts the daughter in the pram and the mom and the daughter, they go shopping to a shopping mall. Okay. So when they go to a shopping mall, imagine three they go to the, uh, the, the the mall of India in, in Noida or something like that. So they go right there. They go to a shopping mall and she does all the best shopping you can imagine. She buys some nice makeup stuff. She buys some footwear, some nice dresses, some chocolates. Oh, she's very happy. Now she was about to leave the shopping mall. And just before she could leave, her eyes strike 
an ice cream shop, her favorite ice cream shop, right there. And she wants to have a strawberry ice cream. She loves it big time. You know, that was a favorite, absolutely brilliant ice cream store. So she decides to get closer to the store. And unfortunately, she couldn't get inside with the pram because the store's entrance was under renovation. And they had a very small pathway to get inside. So finally, she looks at the baby. The baby is happy. She shouts and says, one strawberry ice cream, please. And the ice cream man is ready preparing the ice cream. The baby is happy, but she has to now leave the pram to get inside to make the payment. So the baby is happy. The baby is playful. She very quickly leaves for a few seconds, makes the payment. The moment the baby loses the sight of her mother, the baby starts crying. And babies cry in a very shrill voice. The very next second, the entire mall is getting the attention of this baby. You know what? Everybody gets closer. Where is this mother? Where are her parents? And she's all by herself. The mother jumps out of the this ice cream store instantly, looks at the baby and says, Lakshmi, I know this has happened before, but you can take very good care of this, isn't it? Take a deep breath, Lakshmi, and tell yourself, Lakshmi, Relax and now smile, okay? Because you see, if you react right now, everybody is going to make fun of you. So you have to really be calm and relaxed, all right? Lakshmi, relax. Very good. This is conversation going on. And this old guy was watching this mother and daughter talking. The old guy goes to the mom and says, Ma'am, I know you're trying to cool down your daughter, but don't you think whatever you're talking to her, she might not relate to it? The lady looks back to the man and says, Sir, who told you that I'm talking to this daughter of mine? I am talking to myself. Lakshmi is my name. I am telling myself, Lakshmi, relax. Because listen, sir, I have to deal better. I have to feel better to deal better. If I don't feel better, I cannot deal better with her. To be able to deal better, I must feel better. So I'm trying to tell myself, Lakshmi, relax. So that I am in a position to take charge of myself first before I can take charge of situations around me. Listen, my dear friends, it is so relevant right now in today's situation. There is a lot of stuff happening in our life around us that we are sometimes bound to get a little cranky about situations. And there are certain challenges going on. You have to probably, we, we get a little cranky. We get a little uh, anxious about how do we handle situations. Now, you can't jump into that situation like that and be a part of that challenge or that tiff. You have to be very, very focused first on feeling better, relaxing yourself, and then dealing better. So can I request all of you, whenever things get on your nerves, whenever you think you're losing charge, whenever you think you would like to take charge of the situation, as a mature man, as a mature man, please tell yourself, Lakshmi, Relax. One more time. Okay, we're all going to do it together. It's going to be fun, everybody. Come on, Mangalji. Come on, Pooja. Let's do it together, Sunil. Lakshmi, relax. Very good job. Now, you know what? You know what, Vignesh? Don't say Lakshmi, relax, because otherwise your, might, your, your wife might think, who's this Lakshmi now? So don't say the word Lakshmi. Just say your name and relax. Okay, just kidding. Okay. <laughs> Mangal gets the point. So Lakshmi, relax. You see, a very important point to understand today is this. Understand, my dear champions, you cannot always control what goes on outside, but you can always control what goes on inside. When we go through this confusing state right now, where things look a little anxious, it is generally okay for us to get a little challenged. I want you to give yourself a break. Five seconds, take a deep breath, because in these five seconds, I call it the five second break of infinite possibilities. You will find mature ways to take charge of that situation when you give yourself a break rather than being quickly reacting. You see, reaction is a thoughtless process. Response is a thoughtful process. If you want to be a great leader, this time today is truly the right test of leadership. Okay, everybody can be happy in good times. If you want to be happy in today's time, you have to be in charge of yourself first in order to be happy and then create happiness for people around yourself. And you have to take responsibility, Sarana. The earlier you do that, the better it gets. How can you do it? Here's a practical way to do that. A lot of people tell me, you know, we got a problem. We can't go and have a client meeting. We can't do this. We can't do that. I tell them, if you have a problem, write it down. 
Yes, sir. Write it down, Mangal ji. When you write the problem down, your mind will objectively target and focus to solve that problem. I cannot go and have a meeting with somebody. Cool. Can I have a Zoom meeting like this or a Teams meeting like this? Yes, I can. I can't go and have a cake. Can I make one for myself? I can't go and have a coffee at my favorite store. Example, okay? I can have a coffee at my home. I can do something about it. I can order something. Amazon works, blah, blah. The point is when you write down, you will be able to find objective focus solutions to given situations. And that's what great leaders do. They don't keep themselves in that pool of problems. They rather move out instantly and they take steps to write it down and solve it together. A lot of my friends and my, my good friends who are CEOs of different companies, I was telling them and you know, um, a lot of them uh, believe the fact that there is something very interesting in this world called EQ, which is very important. I said, yeah, EQ is important. A lot of people tell me the IQ, the intellectual quotient is important. I say, yeah, it's important. But you know what? In today's world, if there is something which is more important than EQ and IQ, then that is called AQ. And AQ stands for adaptability quotient. You have to feel better to deal better. And you have to be adaptable to situations that you are usually not used to of. Technology, honestly speaking, me, if you ask me, Mangal, technology was my not my best friend. But now I'm so happy and friendly with all that Zoom and the team and blah, 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 which I was not even remotely thinking I would ever use in my life, right? But I'm so happy. I have made them, I've made them good friends. So the idea is you have to get used to of that new normal. That's the idea. And it's only those people who get used to of the new normal become successful. And for that, you have to feel better so that you can deal better with things around it. You see one. Once upon a time, this big, huge organization in the mobile business had 60% share in the mobile business and they were doing so good. They thought no one can defeat them. They are the rule setters. They are the game planners. 2007 iPhone was long. The share came back from 60 to 10%. In the next five years, they had to lay off 25,000 people from their organization up till they got sold to Microsoft. And you know what happened, my dear friends, that CEO of the company that day in his closing speech with tears in his eyes, he said, we did not do anything wrong, but we failed. Yes, you are right, Mr. CEO. You did not do anything wrong. I agree. But the only thing where you did not go right was you could not change with changing times. And that made Nokia from hero to zero. So if you want to be successful, you have to understand adaptability is going to be the key. Get yourself used to of the new normal. And the best way you can do that is by feeling better so that you can deal better. So feel better to deal better. When you have problems, write down, you'll be extremely successful. Let's revise all the six tools you've learned so far, my dear friend. The first is called choose positive focus. Second is called list 20 and do five. See the good things and be grateful. Please give yourself a positive kickstart of the day. Motivate others so that you can motivate yourself. And the last is improve adaptability quotient. Feel better to deal better with things so that you become a victor and not a victim. And you're going to be a superstar, my dear friends. You know what? What comes to my mind is a story I want to share with you right now, my dear champions. This story is about Olympics. You know what? 1992, Barcelona Olympics. It was a fab, fantastic, oh, awesome day. We shall it was one of those days someday. where a new destiny was supposed to be created in the lives oh, of these running champions, these racers, oh. runners. It was men's 400 meter semi final race, my dear friends. Shot of a gun and the race began. 50 meter in the race, no problem. 100 meter in the race, no problem. 150 meter in the race, my dear friends. One of those runners fell down. He had an excruciating pain in his hamstrings tore completely. The muscles between his knee and his hips joint tore. It was so unbearable. That imagine if our finger gets stuck in the door and somebody pushes from the other side, how unbearable it would be. It was that bad. In that unbearable pain, you know what, my dear friends? He was unable to open up his eyes. The very next second, he gathers the best courage he could. He finally got up. He could not walk. He started limping. He looked at the finish line. His father came through the crowd and he kept his arm on his shoulder and said, You don't have to do it, son. He said, Dad, I will finish that race. He said, okay, in that case, we are in this together. You know what happened, my dear friend, the very next second, 
the father and son together started approaching the finish line and 65,000 people got up and gave a standing ovation to the father and son for creating a new record. Come what may, we will not give up. Derek Redmond had made a point, the biggest point in his life and a lesson for all of us today. Come what may, it's going to get tough. But when it gets tough, the tough gets tougher. You have to get tougher right now, my dear friends. Come what may, we will not give up. Another learning from the story says, you and I, we are not fighting our battle and your battle and my battle. It's our battle. We are in this together. And we will fight it so well because tomorrow is better, tomorrow is bigger, and tomorrow is together. And that is the reason why, come what may, remember these six points every single day. Do not, do not give up because you cannot give up, my dear friends. My dear friends, how are you feeling right now? I just want you to type your feelings right now because I'm going to give you one awesome idea on how you can always live outside the comfort zone. And I'm going to talk about that very quickly. How are you feeling right now? Just keep typing, keep typing, Omeji. Keep typing, Prashant. Very good, Sunil Ji. Very good, Deepak. Very good, Jagdish. Very proud of you. Fantastic, Sakti Ji. Fantastic, superb, Malik. I am feeling superb too. Good job. Good job, uh, Kadam. Good job, Robert. You're very welcome. Good job, Ashok. Fantastic. You are awesome. Can I request all of you to bring your hands up like this, everybody, and say with me one, two, and three. Yes, I will never give up. Put your hands up one more time. Say one, two, three. Yes, I am not giving up. Everybody, bring your hands up one more time. Say yes. Tomorrow is awesome. Everybody, bring your hands up one more. Say yes. I am a superstar. That's who you are, all right? Now listen very carefully. You know what, my dear friends, let me tell you something very exciting. In a jungle, when the sun goes up in the morning, you know what happens? A tiger gets up and the tiger tells itself, if I don't run as, fa as fast as I can today, I'm gonna die of hunger. So the tiger pulls itself out of the comfort zone. The tiger is sleeping, right? And then starts hunting. The same morning, the same morning, the same morning, a deer also gets up and the deer tells itself, if I don't run as fast as I possibly can today, I'm going to die. Somebody will kill me. So he also runs as fast as he possibly can. Deer or tiger, running is important. Moving out is important. Saying no to bad habits is important. And today I'm going to teach you a simple mechanism on how you can step out of your comfort zone and become massively successful, absolutely powerfully possible. It is easily possible. A lot of people told me the other day before my session that, you know what, when I speak, I am not able to speak fluently and I feel a little uh, uncomfortable. Uh, I use a lot of ah ahs and oo oo when I talk to people and I feel comfortable when I use ah ahs and oo I gave him a session. And I gave him a very personal coaching and in 10 minutes, he was out of ahs and oo's. How can you speak brilliantly, fluently without using ahs and uh, I see, you see, uh, uh, uh. instantly you will do that when you join the session tomorrow. So by the way, that's a very important learning that we have for you tomorrow. Now, like I said, success belongs to those people who live outside the comfort zone. Absolutely. I will share with you a brilliant idea on how you can come out of the comfort zone. What is a comfort zone? Well, comfort zone means a place where I feel very comfortable, my current style of working on certain things. For example, I don't want to get up in the morning early because I feel happy sleeping late, comfort zone. I, I would like to watch TV a little bit more, my comfort zone. And let's say I'm eating a little bit more, my comfort zone. There are certain things you want to stop doing. And that is very important for you to move out of the comfort zone. You know what happens in our country? We spend a lot of money on buying treadmill, but after a while, treadmill is used for drying clothes. Can you imagine that? Such an expensive machine used for drying clothes. It is very important to leave the comfort zone. How? I'm going to share with you now. Listen, I'm going to share an experience with you, my dear friends. A few of you know me that I'm an adventure guy. I love adventure. I love doing crazy things in my life. So I was on skydive mission some time back. So I decided to go skydive. So people who have never done skydiving, let me explain that to you. There's a small aircraft. And if you're diving in a new sky for the first time, or you're not sure about, you're not feeling very confident, you want to take support from somebody, you can either dive all by yourself or you can take help of your co-diver. So I thought it's a new sky for me. I'll take help of a co-diver. So me and my co-diver, Roger, we decided to get in a small plane like this. After 5,000 feet or so, when I get up, right, there are maybe 7,000 feet, I ask the pilot, so pilot, are we diving from here? 
The pilot said, no, 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 listen, we're going another 10,000 feet. We will die from 17,000 feet. I said, 17,000 feet, that's going to be great. He heard all of that. And other people also in the flight heard the same. And you know what happened? Some of them were so scared that they said, I think we're not doing it. It's dangerous. We are not doing it. I found a few people started puking. But I was sure I'm going to take a dive. Yeah. So anyways. Now, after a while, the pilot raises his thumbs and says, time to fly. And then me and my partner were the first one standing near the door. The door opens up. And my partner in my ear says, I say three and we jump. I said, okay. He said one. He said two. He said three. We jump. <laughs> What a beautiful moment it was for me, my dear friends. I was up in the sky. I was having the most awesome views you can imagine. I was living my life to the fullest and I was having a ball. I landed on the ground and I said, I want to do it one more time. Let's go and do it one more time. I was so thrilled. I had a lovely, lovely time. Now, let me tell you, when I was coming back in the car, I was going back to the hotel. I was thinking, what made me jump today? What is it that I learned from the skydive? Well, here's my learning. And that's the tool on how you can step out of the comfort zone. Listen, Roger said, I said three and we jump. He said one, he said two, we jump instantly. What did he would have said? I'm going to say 10 and then we jump. One. Okay, we're jumping two. We're jumping three. We're jumping four. Okay, five. Logical brain starts working. I think we should not jump. Six. Uh, should I? Should I not? Seven. I think we will not. Eight. I think I'm not doing it. Nine. No, no, no. I think some other time. Ten. Uh, Roger, no, no. I think I'll, I'll give it a miss. Your logical brain starts working when you delay the process to do something. On things that you can't afford to delay, please remember you have to follow the three second rule to take action. It is called the three second action takers rule. If you are in the morning, you want to get up, the alarm buzzes. If you are able to leave in three seconds, you are able to. If you're not able to leave in three seconds, you press the snooze button, then you lose because you would not be able to go and jump and you would not be able to do the exercise that you're planning to do for many days because the logical brain starts working and the logical brain says, come on, we can sleep another 30 minutes. Come on. After it is Saturday, Saturday, time to sleep. Come on. You know, we'll do it some other time. It's okay. We'll do it in the evening. You know, you want to go cycling. You want to go gymming. You want to go exercising. Do it now. It's the three second rule, my dear friends. Of course, it doesn't apply in big decisions where logic is required. For example, decisions like, should I buy this house? Three seconds, you can't decide. Should I get married to this woman? Three seconds, you, you can't decide in three seconds. It doesn't apply. Should I invest my money, the 20 crores in this, in this fund? No, 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 no. I suggest you use logic there for other reasons where you don't really have to have a lot of logic. Please follow the three second rule to take action so that you can become extremely successful. This is called the action takers rule, my dear friends and my dear friends, then you become a superstar and I'm going to share with you a fantastic story that really will help us for the more. You see what happened is long time back. I went to Mumbai and I was in a, I was a, for a training program and I stayed in a lovely hotel and the hotel had a gym and I get up in the morning, go to a gym. And I went to the reception to ask, where's this gym? They said, the gym is not working, sir. However, we have a partnership with another gym. Please go there and you'll enjoy all the benefits. So I get to the other gym. It was a three-story lovely gym. So I was doing my regular exercise. And I found that there was, a, there was a business tycoon who would also visit that gym every day. I was there for three days. And I would see that before he would come, some people would come from his security to see if everything is okay. Then he will be having his team of people. One of them will be holding a towel. Somebody will have a protein shake for him. Somebody will have fresh juice, water. And that's the kind of aura that he had. A lot of people around. But I noticed one thing very clearly. You know what? Despite so many people there in the gym with him, he had to do his exercises all by himself. Which means nobody can lift up on your behalf. Nobody can do push-ups on your behalf. Nobody can do a cardio on your behalf. You have to do your jumps, your push-ups, your cardio, your squats all by yourself. My dear friends, the moment will not light me. I will light this moment myself. That's what light up your life is all about. Friends, I'm going to share and close this program with a very important social message. You see what you see right now is a picture.
picture of a woman and a little baby 17 months old in Mumbai this lady went to market and she got COVID-19 infected unfortunately she was not wearing that mask that day and now the situation is such that the, the woman cannot meet her daughter 17 months old daughter. you can imagine the emotional bonding that they share all they do is they get to meet each other only once in a day just once in a day for 10 minutes and can you see this picture there's a glass wall in between and the little baby with her tiny hands she touches the glass and the mom touches from the other side and they see each other only for 10 minutes every day and they cry so much because of one mistake that she made unfortunately she went there without the mask and got infected my request to you my dear friends I care for you and here's my kind request please wear a mask if you have to go out please wear a mask if you're working please wear a mask if you're stepping out and kindly use sanitizers and please do maintain social distancing when you're with people I'm sure you definitely will I'm sure you will be an example for others to follow as well friends let me tell you it is you who's responsible for bringing happiness to people please make sure whoever you meet in this time of challenge Please create happiness for them, motivate them. The least we could do for the world around is to bring joy. My dear friends, those who say, Zindagi bas ek pal hai, isme aaj hai na kal hai, jiro isko is tarha ki jo bhi aap se mile, bas yehi kahe ki aaj hi uske zindagi ka sab se haseen pal hai, sab se haseen pal hai, sab se haseen pal hai. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to extend my thanks to you for being a part of this great session. You are awesome, you are fantastic, and I want to thank you very much for being there. And as Baba Ramdev says, ye jo aapne saari baatein si kiye, aise nahi hoga, karne se hoga, mujhe ummeed hai aap and you're going to make your life amazing and awesome and superb. So big thanks to you once again. Ashish ji, it was a great learning. Uh, Ashish, you were as amazing as ever. Lot of, lot of energy as usual. Very, very, very interesting and focused workshop. Thank you, Mr. Training Session has come up at the right side. Uh, this was very much required, Ashish. Uh, really uh, thankful for your support. I mean, Ashish is my mentor also. And a uh, lot of things I learned from him. Yeah, and he has lot to give every time here. Yeah, he is a human charger. Thank you so much, Ashish. Never thought a virtual session can be so interactive. Thank you, Ashish. Thank you very much for a wonderful session. Thank you, Ashish.